This video is on how to use Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for a compound Atwood machine. I start out by making some assumptions about the masses. However, if you had the masses, these assumptions would not have to be made. I stated that M2 is greater than M1, meaning that the smaller pulley will be rotating clockwise. I also said that M3 is greater than M1 plus M2, meaning that the larger pulley will also be rotating clockwise. I will be using the x and y coordinates to describe the motion of this compound Atwood machine. So as you can see, the x coordinate is measuring the distance of the mass M3 from the large pulley, and the y coordinate is measuring the distance of M2 from the small pulley. This system has two degrees of freedom because you can change either one of those coordinates without affecting the other. Two degrees of freedom means that we will have to use the Euler-Lagrange equation twice. Let's start making our kinetic energy. First, let's look at M1. M1 will be moving upwards in relation to the smaller pulley and upwards in relation to the larger pulley. This means that we could add the speeds of x dot and y dot to get the final speed of m1. This means that our kinetic energy of m1 is equal to 1 half m1 times x dot plus y dot quantity squared. For m2, it will be moving down in relation to the smaller pulley, but up in relation to the larger pulley. That means that the velocity is either going to be x dot minus y dot or y dot minus x dot. However, because that term is squared, it doesn't matter which one you put it which one you put first because the result will always be the same. This means that we can write the kinetic energy of m2 as being equal to one half m2 times x dot minus y dot squared. For m3, it will be moving down at velocity x dot, so the kinetic energy is easy. The kinetic energy for m3 is equal to 1 half m3 x dot squared. And that is the kinetic energy. Now we need to find the potential energy, which is only in the form of gravitational potential energy. I will be measuring the gravitational potential energy from the ceiling. First, I will find the gravitational potential energy of M1. So for M1, I'll do negative M1g. And then here, I need to add the height. So if I look at the x coordinate, it isn't moving in the opposite direction as shown on the screen. So that has to be negative. And the y coordinate, it is also moving in the opposite direction. That means for the height, it's going to be negative x minus y. Next, I will find the potential energy for M2. Like before, I will start out with negative M2g, and then here is the height. So if you see, M2 is going the same direction as the y coordinate, but the opposite direction as the x coordinate. So it will be x minus y. And then last is M3. So you start out the same with negative M3g. M3 is going in the same direction as the x coordinate, so the height will just be x. And I'm just going to rewrite this to get rid of the repetitive negatives. I have made a mistake above, so for the M2 term, it should be y minus x. So if we were to take out the negative in front, now it becomes x minus y. And then the last term just stays the same. Now we have everything we need to form the Lagrangian, which is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. To save time, I'm just going to copy the kinetic energy, then paste that there, and then copy the potential energy, and paste that there. And then I'll just replace the positives with the negatives, and the negatives with the positives. And this is the Lagrangian. Now we just need to take derivatives and then we will arrive at the differential equations. 
Remember, because there are two degrees of freedom, we will have to use the Euler-Lagrange equation twice. First, we can find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. For this, you can just distribute the bottom part in your head, and you get that the partial is equal to negative m1g minus m2g plus m3g, which is equal to g times m3 minus m1 minus m2. Next, we need to find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. And for this, we can just use a lot of the chain rule and take the derivative with respect to the inside of the parentheses and then multiply it by the derivative of inside the parentheses, which is just going to be 1. When you do this, you get that the partial is equal to m1 times the quantity x dot plus y dot plus m2 times quantity x dot minus y dot plus m3 times x dot. And the last thing that we have to do is take the time derivative of what we just got. This is pretty simple. We pretty much just have to change all the x dots and y dots into x double dots and y double dots. And that is one equation down. Now we have to do it again for y. I am just going to copy the Lagrangian again so that it's easier to see. And this time I'll put it all in one row. We start out by taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y. For this again, you can just distribute the second part in your head and you get that the partial is equal to negative m1g plus m2g. This is equal to g times quantity m2 minus m1. Next is the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot. For this, we will be using the chain rule. So we take the derivative with respect to whatever's inside of the parentheses and then multiply it by the derivative with respect to y dot of whatever inside of the parentheses. This is why if you notice on the second term, it is negative because the derivative of negative y dot with respect to y dot is negative one. So I multiplied that term by a negative one and made it negative. Lastly, we have to take the time derivative of what we just got. For this, it is fairly simple. We just have to change all of the x dots and y dots into x double dots and y double dots because m, both of the m's are constants. And that is it. We now have everything to make our two differential equations. So now I can equate what needs to be equated from the Euler-Lagrange equation. I start by taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x, and that is going to be equal to the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. Then I do the same for y. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y is going to be equal to the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot. And that is it. Those are our equations. There will be a part two to this video where we use these differential equations to solve for the equations of each mass. Fortunately, we will not have to use Laplace transformations to solve this system because, as you could see, there are only x dots and y dots as the variables in the equations. So that means you could just solve a regular system to solve for each of them and then use them to find the accelerations of each mass. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. 
Thank you for watching. Bye.